So what is the next step when it comes to that Johnson and Johnson vaccine here in the US? And also, what's the latest on the timeline when it comes to kids and potential vaccines? Dr. Elan Shapiro is the medical director of health education and wellness at Altamed Health Services. He is joining us now this morning to answer those questions. Uh, Dr. Shapiro, thank you so much. Now we mentioned earlier that the CDC could make a recommendation today about that Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Now, if it does return to use, it could come with some kind of a warning or restriction what would that be? Thank you so much and have a beautiful day, of course. Well, one of the things that we're going to be watching is what things they have in common, these six cases that we had. Is it a certain medication? Uh, were they smokers? Uh, were, were any other chronic health diseases that will entitle them to have more possibilities of having clots? Then we, that's one of the things that we're going to be watching for today. Another thing to consider, is it more on females? Is it only in males? Were there any other cases? All of clinical information that we're missing right now will be key to actually have the recommendations going on. And maybe, and most probable, they will go like, you know what? It's one in 1.2 million cases. Uh, the risk of actually getting a clot is it's more if you actually smoke or if you get actually the COVID-19 disease, then we will just recommend it open and uh, use it as it is. I also want to ask you what the latest is on the vaccine efforts for young children, because you hear it in conversations now. There are people who wonder why it would be necessary if little kids don't tend to show severe COVID symptoms and the death rate has been so low for them. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm going to answer as a pediatrician and also as a parent. Uh, it's very important to understand that at the beginning, we had only 2% of cases in the U.S. were kids. Right now, it's more than 12.5%. Initially, it's growing, and we're seeing more teenagers ending up in hospitals. Then, you know, uh, and of course, we have this part of COVID-19 chronic symptoms, the long haulers. We're actually seeing it in kids. Then it's not a mild cold. It's actually a disease. Then we need to be careful with what we have. And having more options to protect our kids is the best thing that we can have. That's why it's so important not just to, you know, think about COVID-19 vaccine, but make sure that we're getting vaccinated our kids, and especially right now that they're going back to school. Well, Dr. Shapiro, getting enough sleep, it has been a big problem during the pandemic yeah. for a lot of people. And now as we all get back to the more normal routine, do you have any tips for getting a better night's rest? Everything starts when you start your day. Then make sure if you can actually squeeze like 20, 30 minutes of exercise is extremely important. I know that everybody tells us that, but it's it's real and you feel different. The other thing is there's a little thing here that is called screens. We need to make sure that one hour or two hours, making sure that we're turning off our brain and running away from screens. That's something that we can actually very, very well use for that. And the third thing that is extremely important, it's the way that we feel with us. Then if we're getting a lot of caffeine and we're running a lot and we're not having time to have a restful mind, all those things actually get compacted and they explode at night and you have insomnia, you don't sleep well, and this could lead to other problems. Uh, and before we yeah. let you go, Dr. Shapiro, I do wanna ask one question for a lot of people are wondering how much of this is on us right now too, to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. for our own health, for our own diet, our own problems medically in, in trying to prevent an, an ill reaction to COVID versus just saying, oh, well, you know, it, it is what it is. It's on us too, right? Completely, especially right now, after the pandemic, we have seen the importance of the diet, the importance of actually moving, the importance of resiliency, uh, and the importance of mental health, the part of depression, anxiety, and all those feelings that we have. And of course, the fifth part is very important, the part of community. All of these things actually fight against depression, anxiety, um, cancer, and other things that we have in our community. That's why it's so important the things that you're just mentioning, that we need to take care of ourselves, not just for the pandemic, but for everything else. Right, it would be a good practice to get into, that, that self-care. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shapiro, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Yeah, same to you.